You know, it wasn't all that long ago, maybe a century, century and a half ago, that um, subject like evolution, uh, development, even progress itself, was pretty well limited to scholarly circles. And it was only in the middle of the 19th century that very slowly, and as a result of the work of people like Darwin and so on, that uh, it entered the popular discourse. And it's come to the point now, of course, that it's second nature for us. In fact, you assume everything is uh, evolutionary. Uh, we, we understand that uh, life on Earth has evolved. We understand that we ourselves were, had a different shape at one time in distant, distant history. Uh, society evolves, civilization evolves, uh, cultures evolve, even science and technology, people talk about them evolving. Um, and then every, almost everybody looks at it that way. Obviously, there are some segments of mankind that are uncomfortable about evolution, but they are the very rare exception. There's only one area of human consciousness in which this is not true, which pe people do not think of in evolutionary terms. And very strange, that crucial area of human consciousness is humanity's relationship to God. We do not think of that in evolutionary terms at all, quite the opposite. <clears throat> if you attempt to do, to do so, you'd run into very quickly a great deal of opposition. Uh, the great religions of the world, um, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, Zoroastrianism, whatever, are d discrete, distinct religions. And far from uh, seeing themselves as, um, as, an, as evolving phenomena, they, their concern has always been to uh, keep in close touch with the roots of the religion. And in fact, when people are out of touch with the roots of the religion, scholarship has devoted itself to, make, to recovering the roots of religion, the original Christ, and so on. Um, and of course, the idea that all of them would be seen as one evolutionary process would be anathema, to, I think, to safe to say to most, uh, to the followers of most of the great religions. <clears throat> well, Baha'u'llah has completely recast the whole nature of religion. Probably it would be more accurate to say that the Bab originally recast the whole nature of religion as one evolutionary process, as one system of knowledge that stretches back and beyond the reaches of recorded time and, and will go on that way. It's a system of knowledge that has taught humanity values and has and done so progressively. Uh, it's not merely one after the other, but a, a developing, an unfolding process. Uh, and we as Baha'is are now quite comfortable. We live, you might say, we live comfortably in history. Uh, in fact, you can't, we, we can't think of religion, probably it's safe to say, in any other terms than evolutionary terms. Religion is progress by its very nature. And that's not only progress through the revelation of these various prophetic religions, but within the Baha'i faith itself, from the Bab to Baha'u'llah, to the ministry of Abdu Baha, to the emergence of the administrative order with the guardianship, and six, after that, the Universal House of Justice. I remember when I was uh, first investigating the Baha'i Faith many, many more years ago than I care to think about, um, I couldn't understand why they had to have two manifestations of God. <laughs> I mean, one was enough for the Buddhists, for the Christians, for the Muslims. Even for the Jews, they had at least one at a time with great stretches of centuries in between. Why did the Baha'is have to have two manifestations of God? Well, of course, I was missing the point. And the point is evolution. The point is progress. There is a development. The Bab had certain um, things to achieve during his very, very short mission. And we'll talk about that at a later stage in this series of discussions and the Bob still, uh, Baha'u'llah still others, and so on. And that's how we have been taught to look at religion, and we're at home in it. 
Um, what we have to be very careful about is that we don't begin to think that this process somehow ended, say, with the ministry of Abdu Baha or or if, or the uh, ministry of Shoghi Effendi, the, the guardian of the faith. Evolution is an ongoing process. Evolution is reality. Evolution, in all, is is the the fundamental feature of all aspects of life, and most particularly of religion, of the gradual and for, uh, development of values that uh, uh, drive the advancement of civilization. And uh, in, in discussing this uh, evolutionary process, uh, we have to start with uh, the point that Baha'u'llah makes very strongly, that this is, we are living in the coming of age of humankind. All of the other um, revelations of God, the, the prophetic revelations, were preparing mankind for this day. Obviously, they taught, um, they, they cultivated certain qualities, capacities in the individual soul, but they also promised that the day would come when the whole of society would be transformed, when um, the kingdom of God would come on earth, when the, the will of God would be done on earth as it was done in heaven and so on both the personal and the social. Well, the Baha'i Faith is not prophetic. The Baha'i Faith is this day. We are living in the day of the coming of age of the human race, the collective coming of age of the human race, in which we can see ourselves as one single people occupying one single homeland, which is the earth. You could say, really, that human history is starting today with us because the histories of the past were the history of different peoples or races or dynasties or whatever. And since uh, this is the case, uh, and since we are involved, we are engaged in the construction of the found, at least the foundations of the kingdom of God on earth, the foundations of uh, a global society, the foundations of a function of a really functioning united human race and the development of what you could call universal civilization since that's what we're since that's what life is about for us um, we have to be aware that the building process is the process itself is obviously progress it's obviously development or evolution if you want to call it that you move from one stage to another from the foundations to the next stage and so on ultimately to the roof so we are living in um, an evolutionary process in our religious life just as is happening to mankind generally in uh, the physical life, the material life of the planet. And in, um, in doing so, uh, there's a huge challenge. That, and the challenge is, obviously, the cause is going to keep on evolving because of the covenant of Baha'u'llah. It's not going to be suddenly arrested. It's not going to be sidetracked. It's not go nothing like that is going to happen. It's going to keep on evolving, maybe even at an accelerating pace during uh, crucial periods. The issue is, will we keep on evolving? As in, will I keep on evolving as an individual? Will I keep up? I don't want to wake up and suddenly discover that I'm standing by the side of the road reflecting while the Baha'i cause is down, miles down ahead of me someplace and accelerating. If that were to happen, I would I would have become a bystander. I would have become somebody who's no longer engaged in a building process that is the whole purpose of human life today, especially the purpose of life for a Baha'i. So what we want to do in this series of discussions is to take a look at, um, the, at some historical circumstances, both outside the faith and within the, that is outside the Baha'i faith and within the Baha'i faith, that um, draw the implications of what I've been talking about for us, that make it easier for us to understand. Because after all, um, you know, Baha'u'llah says God's greatest gift to man 
it, it's not love, it's not mercy, it's not any number of other things you might be able to think of. The greatest gift of God to mankind is reason. We are not just souls, we are rational souls. Faith, Baha'u'llah says, for a Baha'i, is not sort of merely blind belief, though it can be blind in circumstances as, that require it. Faith is conscious knowledge. Faith is conscious knowledge that leads to action. And that being the case, we, we want to understand what we're doing, we, and we under, want to understand why we're doing it, at least to the best of our ability. We, we, we serve the cause because we love Baha'u'llah. We serve the cause in a particular way because we believe absolutely in the guidance of the Universal House of Justice. But to the extent we can, we have to try to understand why, because understanding empowers us. And as I say, though the thing we do not want as individuals is to find ourselves left behind. This is, I can't imagine a tragedy greater for an individual who has recognized Baha'u'llah.